Um, if you have a dream and you want to promote your dream, you're going to have to sell your dream. Uh, there are probably much greater authorities on this than me. Uh, I think I said this years ago, I read a book called Selling a Dream by Guy Kiyosaki. And uh, <laughs> I think he was one of the original Apple dudes. And he suggested that you go take a uh, Billy Graham evangelist course if you want to see somebody who can sell a dream. And I did. Uh, I got some value out of it. It's just not my thing. But um, things basically, one of the things is uh, sales is storytelling. Uh, telling your story, telling uh, how you came up with the idea, what you saw that needed to be done. Uh, I had a young gal at the chiropractic college. Uh, we were doing a sales presentation because these kids are going to go into clinic and they're going to have to talk about it. And uh, I said, okay, what's your story? Huh? I said, what's your story? I mean, what got you into chiropractic? Why should anybody come and see you? And she told this really delightful story about her grandma. And her grandma was... Uh, loved to bake and they loved to eat the baked goods and grandma got down on the back and just could not get around and get the baking done and it sent just this frenzy through the family because it was holiday time and a friend of hers suggested a chiropractor and so she went to the chiropractor and got better and that's why her granddaughter was in chiropractic I said that's your story that's what gets people that's where you start to get people curious I said but, but every entrepreneur has a story as to what got them into their field and then what they have to do is present what is what's valuable about my project. What is it that I bring that is so valuable that you can't live without it? What they say, what I've read in a lot of sales books, is what salespeople, which an entrepreneur is going to have to be a salesperson, like it or not. Uh, my father-in-law was a great salesman and hated being called a salesman. It was just the semantics of it. Uh, he could sit and sell complete interior design in a house for hundreds of thousands of dollars and then said, no, I'm not a good salesman. But if what most salesmen don't do is they don't ask the qualifying question. They don't stop near the end of the presentation or even right at the beginning of the presentation sometimes. Look, this is what I've got. You know something about it. You want to buy. And people will either say yes or we need to know a little bit more. If you've gone through, you've created value, you've asked a qualifying question, and somebody says, no, I don't want to buy, usually what they're saying is, you have not shown me that this is worth enough for me to want to buy it. It's not personal. And that's the hard thing with sales. There's some people who can hear no 50 million times and still go, now you want to buy? Huh? No. Right? That they're just not impacted by no's. I am impacted by no's. But if I hear a no, I just keep asking. I just Then I go back to recreating value. Tell them what they'll get out of it. What, what did I get into it for? What is it that they will absolutely benefit from it? I give them concrete uh, results that we've created. And let them see for themselves whether or not that's what they want to do. And one of the sales books that I read, uh, The Greatest Salesman of All Times or something, he was a car salesman. And... Uh, he said most salesmen forget to ask the qualifying question. He said good salesmen ask the question three times. He said I don't stop until I've asked it at least 11 times and then sometimes I won't stop especially if I know that the person that I'm talking to needs my product. And that's important. If you believe in your product and you know who needs it then you've got to get it to them as a service and just keep showing them again and again and again the value that they'll create. No is just, please, give me more information. I don't want this. I worked with a sales gal in Austin, Texas, and she said I would much rather hear a no than a yes. I've heard so many yeses in my life. Are you going to do my weekend class? Yes. And then you look around, and they've run out of the preview evening quicker than a jackrabbit, you know, just trying to get out of there as quickly as they can. So, so okay, I guess they don't really mean yes when they say yes. So if you hear a no, it means the person is considering it. A uh, little tip on sales. Have a fun day. www.micpeakperformance.com